Hey guys, Jared with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying a great high water flashy attractor stone, and we're going to get started on this thing right now. Okay, so in the vise today, I have a Daiichi 1730 in size 10. I'm going to use hairline plumbing tungsten bead and a 530 seconds in gold. And the first thing we're going to do is just start some 0.02 lead wire. And I like to start it right above the hook point here, a little bit behind, and just wrap it all the way forward to the bead. So this thing's going to be super heavy. It's going to get down quick and it's going to stay down. It's just what you want in a stone. So right behind the bead, I'm just going to break my wire off, push this forward so that it seats the bead and then that won't move. Tuck your little tag in, end in, and then we'll start our thread. So for thread I'm using UTC Ultra in rusty brown 70 denier. I'm going to start that right behind the lead, kind of make sure my lead doesn't go anywhere. I'm just going to wrap loosely through my lead and then back. Let's get rid of your tag. And then we're going to advance our thread all the way back to the bend. We'll leave that right there and then grab a tiny bit of dubbing. For dubbing, I'm using STS Tri Lobal Dub in tan. So it's a little buggy, it's a little hard to work with. It doesn't dub as well as some other dubbings, but it gives a good look. So I'm just going to take a small chunk and I'm going to create a dubbing ball right at the back. And what this is going to do is it's going to splay my tail out. So this is probably the easiest way to keep your tail splayed. Oop. Watch that hook point. It's just a nice little ball. Okay, that right there. Oop. So tighten that up, clean it up a little bit. And then we're gonna grab some biots. And I have goose biots here in a tan. So just take a pair, pull them off, splay them out, set them back to back so that they face out here. What I like to do is take a measurement. So this is maybe roughly half a shank length. You can, you can mess with that. That's not real important. So right on top there, loose wrap, check that out. Pull those all the way up to the lead and then come back a little bit. I'm gonna push these down a tiny bit. You can manipulate these pretty well with your fingers and your thread. And what I like to do here, because my lead is right there, bring all my material that I'm going to tie in right to where the lead ends. That'll help keep your taper. So the next material I'm going to tie in is going to be some Diamond Bright um, Holographic Gold. It's Diamond Braid. It's a cool material. It's pretty flashy. You know, this thing's going to get some fish attention here. So just tie that in, tie that in right. Oh, Got to spin my thread. Tie that in right behind the lead again and then bring it all the way back to your biot tail. Cool. I'm going to advance my thread and I'm going to leave it right here where this hook starts to bend and then I'm just going to wrap this forward. So that doesn't have to be neat, just cover up that hook shank. All the way up. And we're going to tie that off. Go one, two, one behind, or one in front take that off, clean up that errant dubbing. And then the next thing I like to do here, because stoneflies do have a dark back, I'm just going to take a Copic marker using the chisel side and just go like that. Just darken it up a little bit. It's a nice little touch. So we're going to tie on my back here. I'm going to use medallion sheeting and a buggy brown. Um, how you want to measure this is roughly the gap of the hook there. Guys, if you're enjoying our videos, please hit subscribe, hit the bell notification so you're notified of all of our future fly tying videos, and that way you don't miss any. So what I like to do here with this um, and any kind of backing material is tie it in on top of the hook shank, but I like to create a nice little triangle to tie it in there so I don't have to tie in the full width. So make sure that is right on top of the hook shank. I'm going to bring it back, and I'm going to bring it back, you know, roughly maybe 50% of this hook shank maybe a little less. You can kind of play with the uh, proportions on stoneflies, but I do like to have a nice wide and long thorax. So what I'm going to tie in next is some UV2 ostrich plume in dun gray. And what this is going to do is this is going to create the illusion of gills. If you ever look at a stonefly, they have pretty pronounced gills. So just going to take one hurl 
and tie that right in on my side of the hook shank. And then make sure it's in there. Leave my thread right there at the beginning of my thorax. I'm going to take my dubbing. I'm going to pick it out a little bit, break it up so I don't have too, too long of fibers. And then I'm just going to start a nice little dubbing ball. This pattern is super easy, guys. You can change up the colors on this. I really, for whatever reason, we have a ton of stones where we are, a ton of golden stones. So for me, this is just my go-to color. But this would be pretty sweet in black as well. So next I'm going to use um, Hairline Barred Grizzly Round Rubber Legs. And this is in a tan color or a natural color. So I'm just going to take one length. I like to pull it out, cut it in half. And then how I like to tie these in is just wrap it over my thread, place it where I want it, and then I'm going to bring it all the way up behind the bead here. And then I'll show you. I'm going to rotate my hook a little bit. And I'm going to pull this around and fold it over. So what I like to do is get a couple wraps in there loosely, and then I like to adjust my legs. You can still play with these when you have them on there. Get them down nice and tight. Make sure they're splayed out. So here I'm just going to continue my thorax, you know, grab some more dubbing, create a thin noodle onto your thread, and just keep going with the thorax. Pull my legs out of the way. You can use this dubbing to control your legs as well. That looks pretty good to me. Another bit of dubbing. I do like to dub this pretty loose. Um, I like a buggy look and I probably will hit this with a piece of Velcro after. So pull your legs forward. Sneak a tiny bit more dubbing in here. That's pretty good. Okay, so what I like to do now, cut those there. The length on those actually worked out really well. That's about what I want. So the next thing I'm going to do is just bring my hurl through. Um, you want to get pretty tight wraps through here. Watch your rubber legs. Um, you know, you may not get the perfect wrap because the legs are in the way. But just bring it through. It's a cool little touch. One more wrap, and then I'll tie that off. One, two, one in front, front here, and then you should be able to just break that off. Clean that up a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is just pull my backing material over. Pull it right over the top. Make sure it's nice and splayed out here. And then get some wraps over it. Two. And then I, I like to fold this back. Take some wraps in front. And then I'll come in here with my scissors and do my best to get this as close as I can trimmed here. If you keep a little bit of tension on it, just go through and rotate. It ends up with a relatively clean cut. So I'm going to whip finish now. I'm just going to throw two. I'm going to cover this with UV epoxy, so you should be good there. For UV epoxy, I have Loon, Fly Finish, and Thin. So I'm just going to get a good bead going here. Try not to be too heavy-handed. So I like to pull it back over the wing case, down into the body, and then up into the bead. And then this thin stuff is good because it moves around quite a bit, so you can get a nice even coverage. Cover up your thread wraps, give some shine to your flashback here or your backing material. It adds almost a little bit of flash. That's pretty much it. I'm just going to, you know, play with my rubber legs a little bit, and then I'm going to trim the back ones to length. And this is preference. I like to put mine, you know, halfway over the biots and then give them a trim. These might be a little long. Um, I look to be about a bead length in front of the eye. So that's about right. Guys, that's it. It's a super flashy, super heavy, buggy little stone fly. You know, you can come in here, pick some of this out, but that's it. Change up the colors, fish it, and catch some fish. We'll see you next time.